Hi, this is Sean Conley from Epic Games, and this is a video covering how to launch two editors in a multi-user session using Switchboard. So if you've never uh, opened Switchboard before or uh, done a multi-user session, so you want to load the plugins, uh, one being Switchboard, and then uh, make sure that multi-user editing is enabled as well. Uh, once the engine reboots, you'll see this uh, little window up here that says uh, launch switchboard. Uh, if you right click over here, uh, so basically switchboard connects computers together, um, but it's dependent on this switchboard listener. And basically what you do is you'll launch switchboard listener on every machine that you want to connect to switchboard. Um, well, I'll kind of explain more about that later, but go ahead and uh, hit launch switchboard listener. If this is the first time that you're doing it, It'll ask you if you want to build Switchboard Listener and just say yes. Uh, so you can do that. So go ahead and open that up and have a look. So you see that it's started listening here. Um, great. So you can close that for now and then click this button here that says launch switchboard. And again, if this is the first time that you're doing it, it'll pop up, ask you if you want to load a bunch of Python modules and things like that. Just say yes. And then Switchboard takes a minute to load up. We'll have a look. Cool. Okay. So this is switchboard, but we're going to set this all up from scratch. Uh, basically we just go through here the first time out. It's just easier this way. It'll auto, um, build listener and it'll auto install all, all of the, uh, Python libraries that you need. So go ahead and close the editor. Most people, um, kind of in performance capture or VCAM shoots, or even, you know, on, uh, ICVFX stages, they launch uh, switchboard and listener you know, outside of the editor. So you can go and create shortcuts for this and they live in the project. If you go to partner poodle, uh, engine binaries, win 64, and then you should see a switchboard listener. You can create a shortcut, uh, drag it out there. And then for switchboard itself, if you go to plugins, virtual production, switchboard, and then source. And then the bat file will be right here. Let's see, there's an old shortcut. So we normally just drag those out onto the desktop. Uh, first things first, go ahead and launch switchboard listener, make sure that it's there. And then you'll launch switchboard for the first time. Again, it just takes a second. There you go. So when you first launch it, you'll see something like this. Uh, this will be turned off, right? This will be blank and you'll see this. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to go and grab the U project uh, of your particular project. So our case is here. Go and grab city sample. So it uh, fills out the config path and everything. Now, if you are connected to Perforce, if you're connected to source control, you should be able to click this Perforce button on and it'll auto detect everything. Um, if it doesn't try hitting detect, um, and yeah, if it still doesn't, it's not the end of the world. We can, um, hook it up later in the settings. So just click okay here. What we want to do here is we want to add a couple of unreal editor boxes. Uh, this will be one. And then I've got a machine uh, next to me right here that, that we can see, uh, on team viewer when we want. Um, so let's go and we'll add a device. Um, and we can call this header to one. And then what it wants is it wants your IP address. Um, so you can just open up a command prompt and type IP config and get the IP address uh, on your, of your computer. Um, so there's that. And if everything's working, you click this connect button and it should say connect. If you go into the settings here, it's filled out a lot of this stuff for you. The switchboard IP will be you know, whatever the IP of the computer that you're launching it on. And then um, you pretty much don't have to mess with anything, uh, hopefully on the box that you're launching switchboard on, but just something to take note. So here's your IP there. And then this is all of your uh, source control information. If you're running with source control, this is your workspace name, the path your U project, and then your engine directory where the engine's installed. We us go have a quick look at that. So here's where my engine is installed. That's where that is. And then the workspace name, you can get that from Perforce. 
uh, here to go to workspaces. Then you go to edit. So here's your workspace name. And you can just copy and paste that right now. Another thing to note uh, when it comes to Perforce settings. So if you're filling out your source control manually, this is the workspace name of your local box. Now the Perforce project path and your Perforce engine path, a lot of people kind of make a mistake when they're first filling it out, especially manually. And they'll go like, you know, D colon, whatever, 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 and source to their Perforce project path and to their engine path. In this particular section, it wants a, a your stream, right? It wants the actual stream to the actual install. So, you know, UE5, partner poodle, whatever. So just kind of watch out for that. It even tries to, you know, give you like a little hint here to try and help you out, not to, you know, do D colon, whatever. Let's go and hook up our second box. Now, the second box, the same thing, you know, make sure switchboard listener is built on it. Make sure plugins are loaded, things like that. I have launched switchboard listener on my second machine over there. It's right here. And then what I do is I normally just kind of uh, send myself an email or Slack all of the IP address and all the before settings for my second box, but we can just go through it here. So let's start a new engine. Let's call this editor two. And the IP address for my second box is, let's see. Right, so let's connect that. Okay, that's fine. It says could not start P4, but it connected the editor. So the reason why it's having a problem connecting to P4 is chances are, now if you've got similar machines uh, or if you're on a stage, you may want to consider you know, duplicating project path, duplicating. The workspace statement will probably have to be a little bit different, but in this particular case, on my other machine, like all this stuff is on the E drive, it's not on the D drive, uh, things like that. So we'll go and, like I said, I just slack myself all this information. I'm going to copy and paste it. Now, this is a little bit of a slow process, and we'll kind of skip through this pretty fast in the video. But every time that you update this information, it'll kind of come up and it wants to like parse through assets. Uh, I'll show you a little bit for the first one, and then we'll just skip through. So this is my workspace name on my other computer. And then you should see, there it is. So this will go through here. Let me change our engine. And we'll go to the project. Great. Okay, so that's done. Come out here, and you can kind of jostle this by disconnecting. And connecting again, and hopefully what we'll see is we'll start seeing some changes going here. Okay, perfect. Um, so the reason why we're only seeing the project change list and not any engine change list, if you're building from source, is you would want to go in here, it's saying use existing, and you can switch this to build engine. And now you see uh, engine CL and project CL, and this will take a minute, but it, it'll grab the uh, engine CLs from both boxes. So this is red here, that means that that the project CL is out of date on my other box, you can set the preferred project CL and the preferred engine CL right here. Uh, these buttons will just kind of bring everything to the latest that you have in Perforce. This will sync all devices. So it will sync uh, anything that's in red to both devices. This will just sync to this device and this device, of course. These, this will build everything. So it will build the engine and then this will sync and build. And again, you've got the build button right there. So for right now, we're just going to sync our second editor box to make sure that both machines are lined up uh, with each other, which is kind of a necessity. Okay, great. So just to take like a quick little tour here, uh, this is the level that you're going to want to open, right? The persistent level. So we're going to open a uh, simple ground. And then down here, this will say whether or not when you launch these editors, it will auto join to a multi-user session. And this is the session name. So it will create a server and then create a session. So you've probably seen these two things kind of toggle on and off. So you you can take things out of uh, multi-user uh, each box separately. There's this that will uh, connect and disconnect the 
boxes to, sw to switchboard, of course. And then this up arrow here will launch the editor. So you can launch it for everything. You can launch it just for the Unreal devices, or you can launch each individual box. Um, so we're going to go ahead and launch boxes. Now, if you see an error down here, it says, you know, can't find multi-user slate server, can't find multi-user server, have you built it yet? If you're building from source, you may have to go in and build it. Um, so it's under programs and you can just right click and build multi-user server, multi-user slate server. If you're running like vanilla UE from the launcher, you most likely won't have to worry about that. But you, I quickly got out of it, you saw. So this, this is the multi-user server that popped up. So it made a multi-user server on the box. These are archive sessions. It hasn't made a new session yet. Like every, everything's still kind of launching and working. Have a look at our second box here. And you see that UE is launching here on the second box as well. And you just have to give it a minute for UE to launch and for the multi-user session to get created and then for everybody to join. Okay, so right here, you see the engine just popping up right now. It's preparing shaders. You see this little um, box here that says, you know, joining session. If you pop open your multi-user server, you can kind of watch the progress of this. When things come online, they kind of start out as this, like, you know, admin, whatever, 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 but this will change name to uh, editor one. And then you'll see like an editor two box down here as well when it kind of joins in. So this, this does kind of, take a minute from time to time. Actually, this is good that this is popping up. So you'll see this kind of pop up from time to time. So it was trying to create a session, but then we saw that it had local changes to this box, which means that it's gonna be out of sync with the other box. Now you can control this under the project settings. If you go down to multi-user editing, there's this validation mode and that's what it's doing, right? It's validating that you know, everything's in sync and everything's correct. We have it set to soft, which will basically, it will pop this warning message up and you can hit continue. Hard will just straight up not let you move forward. And then soft auto proceed will basically skip right through this box. And you click continue. And what it'll do is it'll put your session back to what the default session is. So now that you've clicked continue, uh, you see that editor one is now in here. Uh, my editor two box looks like it's loading reflection captures. Uh, but we can talk about some things until that comes uh, online. So that's in multi-user now. If you wanted to like manually get in and out of multi-user and you wanted to check and see if the other box is in there or, or not, there's this multi-user browser. And you could basically leave the current session like this and you can come back into the current session like this. Also, you'll see um, in here, you'll see previous sessions. So you can like right click and restore and it'll restore everything in that previous section. So if you've never used with work with multi-user before, basically everything is, is stored with like um, as a transaction. That was a giant street, let's do this. So if I move this around, you see, these are all the transactions. It's, it's kind of like the undo buffer in Photoshop. So all of these changes will be reflected in the other box in this box, and they're all stored on the multi-user server. These aren't necessarily going to be going uh, straight into your persistent level yet. Let's say you have done your session, everybody's moved things around, everybody's happy, and you want to save and you want to submit to source control. What you could do is you notice down here when you're in a multi-user session, there's this thing called persist session changes. So if you click on that to persist, you'll see everything that was changed. In this case, we just changed the sidewalk on the UMAP. And uh, if you were to make like a whole mass of changes, grab this, and grab this, and grab this, and you go back to persist session changes, you'll see that now this map and this map that changes. Now you don't have to persist everything. If you don't want to, you can just click that off. You can click that on. You'll see um, submit to source control or not. If you were to just hit persist, what it would do is it would take these transactions 
out of the multi-user server and basically bake it down to the persistent level. And then what you can do is you can save all and you can submit to, to source control. You can also save yourself a step by just hitting submit to source control, you know, change trees, and you hit submit, and it will automatically do that step for you where it will persist the changes, it will save your persistent level, and it will submit everything to source control. And that's a way to you know, get into a multi-user session from source control, adding both boxes, and working together and then how to uh, save and then how to save changes and submit them now you know, what people do on a vp set like a performance capture set or on a um or on a vcam set which is something that maybe we should go over here is now let's say we we're done with this one and we're good and you leave for the day and you come back in the next morning and you're ready to shoot again now people, there's kind of like this art form to when to version up a multi-user session, when to keep things around, when not to not to keep things around. It's the same thing on an ICVFX stage where they'll version up the multi-user session pretty much you know every time they yell action. Because what the nice thing about it is all of these sessions can be kept around and you can make you know connections from these sessions to whatever like take record take names or slate names. So you could always kind of get back to what you need to do. So, you know, we find ourselves making a lot of multi-user sessions. So let's go ahead and close this and then what we can do. You can hit this plus arrow to version up. Here we go. And let's bring everybody back up. And you'll see that it will add a session here. There we are, we're coming up. You'll see it's creating session one. If you go to the server, you'll see you have a new session. And if this was, you know, what you were tape recording yesterday, you never wanted to get back to it, um, you, you can just double click uh, and get back into that session or you can get back into this session. Now, sometimes getting into multi-user sessions will be finicky. Basically, if you like change some editor properties or change the uh, the engine build or change the perforce change list and you try and, and you know and you go in and you close and you try and get back in this same session but the engine has changed or the editor has changed or you've gone through and you've loaded up a different template a different map and you try and get in there it will not let you uh, into multi-user. So in that case, what you want to do is you want to just completely close your server name. You'll want to version up or put a new name there, and then you can launch it, and it should get you into multi-user server. One other caveat that I forgot to mention earlier is if you're having a hard time connecting to Perforce and you're like 1,000% sure that everything is correct, right? You've, you have gone in here, You've double checked that this is correct, and you know it's not like E colon or D colon, and that this is correct, and then your second box like this is correct, and you're absolutely super, super, super sure. Every once in a while, we have to do this thing where if you go into the workspace and then you open Environment Settings, and then you click OK, and then you go and jostle it and connect and reconnect, it will come through. Uh, that happens very rarely but it happens enough and it's so obscure that I figure it's worth mentioning here. So hopefully that's helpful uh, and you can get yourself into a multi-user session. This is a lot easier than, you know, kind of going to the editor and, and setting your static endpoints and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so go ahead and give Switchboard a try next time.